<laughs> I don't like making rant videos. I just want to get that out of the way. Whether if it's about a show, a franchise, a network, a movie company, a lot of this content tends to repeat itself. But that's just why I don't like making them. Especially since more often than not, even when it comes from a good place, the final product is negative. And it's easy to be negative, but I find it infinitely more rewarding to be positive. Yet, I get why people make rants. It is cathartic to a certain level, especially when you hit a point of frustration, feeling as if you can only stay silent for so long and you just want to get your thoughts out there. That's the point where I am at today. Back in the early development of the roundtable, I made plenty of rants directed at Cartoon Network, mainly their schedule, but I put those rants to rest. Not only did I not find any enjoyment in being negative, but I was very much trying to repeat myself. Yet, and it's become more apparent in the last year or so, Cartoon Network has plenty of problems, problems that need to be addressed. That'll be its own separate video, however. This is more of a prologue, a glimpse into to a much bigger problem. It's something that I feel reveals a lot of flaws of Cartoon Network, enough for this topic to stand on its own, and quite frankly, I don't want the Cartoon Network video to be 90% Steven Universe. Now to balance out these two rather negative topics, I will be making a video discussing a network I think is absolutely winning right now, and is setting the foundation for a beautiful future with upcoming cartoons. With all that said, let's just get right into it. Cartoon Network is killing Steven Universe. It's not something intentional, and as I said in my introduction, it is a part of a much bigger problem. Now what goes into killing a show? What does a network have to do in order for its fans to point fingers and accuse the network of sabotaging said show despite its immense popularity? If it's popular, how and why is it being sabotaged? Again, it's not, at least not on purpose. It just shows how out of touch and struggling the higher ups of Cartoon Network truly are. Steve Universe is a serialized show. It has an overarching, ongoing story. This is nothing new to animation, and this is nothing new to Cartoon Network. Ben 10, Codename Kids Next Door, The Secret Saturdays, Adventure Time, and even though it came out after TV Universe, OKKO OK Heroes are just some of the shows that aired on the network that had ongoing stories in between little slice of life breather episodes. All these shows started out moderately episodic, and once we got used to the characters in the world a bit, threw us in for a wild ride. What makes TV Universe stand out from all of these shows is that the overarching story seems to be a bit more intense and arguably darker than the bulk of the aforementioned. War, genocide, morality, life, death. You can find bits and pieces of this in all of the shows I mentioned before, but none of those cartoons focus on all of these topics at once. Not to mention, Steve Universe is a progressive show, filled with LGBT representation. So it's fair to say a show this ambitious, setting out to juggle so many objectives at once, and find moderate success with it, will have a lot of eyes on it, which is why the show has such a diverse audience. Diverse in age, sexual orientation, overall identity, race, and so much more. The fan base of the show is as much of a melting pot the cast and crew are inside and out. When you have such a unique audience like this, you as a network need to possess one key thing to keep the momentum going. Consistency. Now, I'd argue Steve Universe as a show is consistent in the way it's formatted. It's found a good pattern in having a bulk of plot episodes followed up with a bit more lower level laid back episodes. For every adventure in space, there's an adventure in Beach City. All right, that's kind of a lie, but you get what I'm saying. However, consistency doesn't translate to the actual distribution of the episodes, which is the biggest factor in why Steve Universe is dying. Cartoon Network does not air new episodes of this show. And and this is something out of the crew universe's hands. This is something out of Rebecca Sugar's hands. No matter what people on the internet may tell you. While yes, production hiatuses do occur in the show, which again, isn't the fault of the crew universe, not only does everyone need a vacation once in a while, but production hiatuses are also used to allocate resources, figure out a budget, keep that B word in mind, it does play a factor in all of this. And since not everyone can afford taking time off, people like storyboarders need to find new work, meaning time needs to be spent finding new artists in the their place. Make no mistake, every time an episode is released on the app or airs on television, that is all at the hands of Cartoon Network. Now, I'm not 100% sure on how events like Comic-Con work. As you guys may be familiar, this past summer at San Diego Comic-Con, 
they unveiled the episode Lecture Me to Homeworld, which was huge for a multitude of reasons, and has yet to air on TV. And after being shown at the panel, it was released on the app and now on platforms such as iTunes. If I would have to guess, this was a team effort between the Crew Universe and Cartoon Network themselves. Again, the people who make the show, well, that's all they really do, make the show. But even events like Comic-Con falls into Cartoon Network's hands. They have to apply for the panel. They have to budget the panel to figure out which cast and crew is going to be there. And they likely would have to oversee what's going to be shown at the panel. So I wouldn't find it hard to believe if Rebecca Sugar and whoever at Cartoon Network was working on San Diego Comic-Con panels decided, hey, it'd be a great idea if we can show the next episode since it's so huge. And then whatever team at Cartoon Network that was ahead of Comic-Con went to their bosses and after the process got everything approved. But I'm getting slightly off track. Back to the airing schedule. Ever since 2016, around the time that started this channel actually, Steven Universe's airing schedule has become atrocious. I know a lot of people feel as if the Steven Bombs marked the beginning of this just wreck of a schedule, but I don't think so. Even when Steven Bombs began in 2015, not only did we still get weekly episodes, but when there were a Steven Bomb, the show would be off for about a month. So one month we would get a Steven Bomb, then next month nothing, then new episodes again. And when fall 2015 came around, they went back to weekly. So how did 2016 become a mess? The bittersweet thing known as the Summer of Steven. After Steven's birthday bomb aired, the show went on hiatus for about three months. During that period, we learned through Twitter that Cartoon Network was planning an event called the Summer of Steven. Now for reasons we're not sure of, the first week of Summer of Steven instead became a month-long weekly event called Steven Universe in Too Deep. And also the episode Steven Floats aired early in France. So all in all, along with a few other last minute schedule changes, it was a unique experiment, and it was nice getting a Tanami-esque old school experience having new episodes every day, but then uh, things got weird. While it is an assumption, I strongly believe Summer of Steven is the reason why we had a three month gap between Log Day and Super Watermelon Island. Now the previous hiatus before Steven's birthday bomb wasn't anything unusual for Cartoon Network. When it gets closer to winter, Cartoon Network has taken a slew of shows off of premieres for a while, just because ratings dwindle a bit. Now they put quite a few premieres around this time, but for 2015, it was a bit more understandable. The hiatus after a log date in Super Warman Island was not only unbearable because, well, it was three going on four months, but because of where the place and its story was at. We were just about to get the climax of the cluster arc, which the next two episodes provided, but a lot of people were dissatisfied in its conclusion. And I can't blame them. You would think the network would put the show on hiatus in the middle of an arc, but but not right before the end. This is a problem that has actually carried on today with other shows. I'm looking at you, OKKO. Okay, at the time, a lot of fans thought there was a little bit more to the cluster arc left than there actually was. So when the whole thing got resolved in 11 minutes, people were like, well, I, I waited for that? After all those episodes? But hear me out. This hiatus also occurred during a point where Cardinary split the production seasons of all their shows in half. So all those Super Wildman Island and Gem Drill were season two in production order, they are now considered season three in airing order. This could have affected distribution and maybe that's why this show was on longer hiatus than usual, but despite being season premieres, Super Watermelon Island and Jim Jim would have functioned better as season finales. Imagine if they aired after a log day and then we got a hiatus, and when we come back we go right into the same old world, which fully integrated Lapis into the cast of the show. I think fans would have had a lot better reception to the cluster arc. Sure, it still would have felt a bit rushed, but the Steven birthday bomb would have ended on a high note, and I think a rather somber episode about Lavis's past would have been a way better introduction to go back into things than, you know, the world is about to explode. And this is the second major problem, the second factor as to why Cartoon Network is killing Steven Universe. It's not just the hiatuses, it's when they place the hiatuses. They go hand in hand. Now to finish my thought from earlier, the summer of Steven affected the entire network because it did pretty solid in ratings. They started doing this with all their shows. Gumball is new all month long, Uncle Grandpa is new all month long long, etc, etc. Now that was nearly 30 new episodes of Steven Universe in a month. 30! You know how long that would have been at a weekly format? Like 6 or 7 months of content. That's why I didn't mind the bombs back in 2015, back when there were premieres every other month. We may go through 5 episodes in a week, but there's 5 weeks in a month. So back then the bombs didn't change anything too much. We were still getting a month worth of premieres, but all at once. Now, however, <laughs> oh god. So yeah, six or so months worth of premieres in one month is, uh, different to say the least. I mean, it was great for me, someone starting up their channel talking about Steve Universe have a brand new episode every day. 
the gold mine, right? And even after the summer of Steven, we went right into season four. And then this, this is where things, uh, yeah. So after season four began airing on a weekly schedule, things were pretty good, pretty good. We had a short month long break. Then in November, Gem Harvest aired, another month long break, and January saw Steven Universe out of this world. Although that accidentally got released on the app early and it was gonna go into February. I mean, it still did when it aired on TV, but you get the idea. After that, season four kept continuing at a weekly schedule. All right, nice, nice. And then in March, it disappeared. Now this was another month long break as it took April off and then returned in May, where we got the end of season four and Steven Universe wanted and <laughs> And then it went all downhill from there. Now, around this time, the show did go on an actual production hiatus. This seemed to be largely due to the Steven Universe movie. And I mean, regardless of whatever episodes they were working on at the time, which I'm sure is probably way crazier than things we're at now, if you can believe that. But I think anyone deserves a break before and working on a TV movie when you're used to just making 11 minute episodes. So as a result, despite reports of saying there was gonna be premieres that summer, after Wanted, we went on a six month hiatus. A six month hiatus? Oh, wow. Well, I mean, if only you didn't burn through six months of episodes in, uh, last summer, maybe you would have episodes this summer, you know? Yeah, one, it may have aired a little later, but if you just, uh, you know, aired things like a normal show, in the time we had that six month hiatus, we probably could have been through a good chunk of season four. And I don't know about you guys, but I think Carnera could have made Out of This World a great summer event. Oh, but we'll hit on advertising in a second. Now, this six month hiatus was torture, not just because it was six months, months, but because one it ended with Steven returning to Earth, having to leave Lars behind on Homeworld. Now during this hiatus, we did get a clip of Lars of the Stars, an episode where Lars becomes a space pirate. So we knew his space escapades would turn out pretty well. So what's the issue? Not only did this six month hiatus kill a lot of the hype for the show, and people did drop off for quite a while, a lot of fans not even returning until Jungle Moon in January, but the return of the show actually killed off some hype as well. How do people drop off from the show returning? Well, well, it's because the episodes we came back with in November through the app, which was also poorly advertised. Now, this is not me stroking my own ego, but it's safe to say the Roundtable is one of the biggest channels for Steven Universe discussion. We see those comments, and boy oh boy, a lot of people were confused when we were talking about new episodes in November. Anyways, it didn't help these episodes were doing wins up until Kevin Party. What's wrong with those episodes? Well, nothing inherently, but when you kick off a six month hiatus with Steven returning home, one of his friends being stuck in space, and the diamonds out for his head, not to mention the trailer alongside Lars of the Stars being edited to be pretty intense, when in reality a lot of these scenes were uh, not that intense at all, you as a viewer are going to have expectations. So to get six episodes of Steven and Carly falling out again, Steven literally not caring what happened on Homeworld, with a fake out flashback scene Carton Ortiz does with, Sadie starting a band, Steven and Connie make up. Also, Kevin's there. Also, Lars is barely mentioned outside of Dewey wins. And the two most important takeaways is Lapis leaving Earth and Smokey Quartz fighting a vegetable for two seconds. Yeah, uh, these weren't strong episodes to come back with. When you go on to break the scale of a six month hiatus, something even normal shows usually don't do between spring and fall, you gotta come back strong. These episodes weren't strong. Now, considering Lars of the Stars was previewed at Comic Con, I do believe it's a safe assumption to say, especially considering we had an entire trailer comprising of these episodes, that Dewey Wins Up Until Kevin Party was already finished. They should have just aired these episodes a week or two after Wanted, and then went on a six month hiatus. Why? Well, it would have been a lot more appropriate to speculate what happens next, and people wouldn't have been underwhelmed and dropped the show when it did return down the road. I think if they just aired these six episodes on a weekly basis, going on hiatus in like July, and then that way at San Diego Comic Con last year, they could have showed Lars and the Stars, and that would have made sense. Hey, Steven and Connie make up now. That wasn't spoiled to us by the clip of this episode. And while we know Lars is safe, we want to see what happens next. And honestly, if they just did that and then went on hiatus, even if it was a longer hiatus, being seven or eight months instead of six, I think people would have been a lot more appreciative. Because when Steven Universe Stranded did air in January, a lot of people got back on the hype train because, oh my god, pink diamond face reveal. All right, so you got some of your audience back. Nothing could go wrong. Oh my god, it's not coming back until 
until April? Yeah, so after a string of uh, episodes a lot of people probably won't remember, the actual plot returned for about two episodes and then dipped back out. Do you just think people aren't gonna notice? Do I look dumb to you? It does not entice people to stay on board, especially when once again, you hype up the return as this huge exciting thing and everything's actually pretty mundane in reality. All right, so let's just go right into it. Advertising. Now advertising is probably the most complex part of Cartoon Network because when it comes to Steven Universe, sometimes they hit it right out of the party and then sometimes it feels as if they've never seen the show before. And sometimes it feels as if they're just giving fans the finger. The show's advertising has evolved over the years, but the thing is, they don't really advertise the show all that much. At least, not in a meaningful way. And I'm not even talking about during hiatuses, I mean, they barely are the show where you can make advertisements for a show you don't air, but whenever the show premieres on a weekly basis, even though that's few and far between, they never really make the promos meaningful if they have them at all. 2017, advertisements were just a part of the new, 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 new bumpers when they would say, oh, by the way, there's a new TV universe, and then move on. What is the episode about? Now, this is one of Cartoon Network's overarching problems that I'll talk about in that own rant video, but a simple advertisement of, one of the rubies are back, can they be trusted, can go a long way, at least longer than, by the way, there's TV universe this week, uh, 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 watch any of these YouTubers get a synopsis out of it, and although it's unfortunate, it is true. Not just cutting creators on YouTube, but Reddit, Tumblr, 4chan. The fans on all these platforms, yes, even 4chan, do a way better job at hyping up people for the series, way more than Cartner themselves tend to do. Topical promos used to be common of Cartoon Network. Now they do the bare minimum. Why? Well, <laughs> that B word <laughs> is not enough to just say, hey, new episodes are airing. You gotta get people incentives on why they should watch these new episodes. Is any of the main cast in danger? Are we going to see any new gems? What big mysteries are we gonna get another clue towards? Now don't get me wrong, sometimes when they do try clickbaiting us, it goes horribly wrong. I'm looking at you, Rocknaldo. But they could get so much mileage out of just creating promos dedicated to one particular episode. Even something like Sadie Killer. Is Sadie going crazy? Find out New Steven Universe Friday at 7 on your Cartoon Network. Like that right there? If A, these episodes weren't already on the app, and B, I wasn't 20 years old, I probably would have fell for that advertising and got hyped for Steven Universe. I mean, is Sadie going crazy? Is that her as a monster as she bites that donut? Like, what's going on here? Atmosphere, ladies and gentlemen. The promotion around this show lacks atmosphere. All right, so we got a lot of the key things down. The hiatuses are atrocious, and while people are loyal, something that Cartoon Network either doesn't want to accept or doesn't realize is that Steven Universe is not the only one in town. There's plenty of other overarching animated series that are doing things in a similar fashion to Steven Universe, both on cable and on streaming services. So the time spent on not airing episodes that are done, as I'm recording this video, the episodes after Lecture from the Homeworld are done, they almost aired in France six months ago, is time spent for fans to consume other media and ultimately lose interest in Steven Universe. And do you know what? I'd argue Reunited would have been a great place to put the show on hiatus. And as far as TV airing goes, it was. But Lecture to Homeworld is out. It has millions of views accumulatively on the internet. And as far as fans are concerned, that is the most recent episode, not Reunited. And once again, that's a horrible place to put a hiatus. So, I don't know, maybe whoever made the call to release Lecture Middle Homeworld, they were kind of doing the Phantom a solid, but in the long run, it was kind of jumping the gun. But there's a fourth and final factor, one that actually is less reliant on Cartoon Network and more on the crew universe, and that's social media presence. Now, admittedly, this is something extreme fans kind of soiled, but Steve Universe has like no social media presence. Yeah, it'll pop up on CN social sometimes, but the crew universe Tumblr, it only gets updated once in a blue moon. And while, yeah, seeing stories storyboards and stuff is cool, give us concept art, scrapped ideas, alternate scenes, deleted scenes, things to keep the fandom well engaged. Okay, yeah, new episodes aren't airing, but guess what? Seeing alternate designs to the diamonds, Rebecca Sugar's original sketches for them, episode ideas or sequences that got changed or scrapped, that's interesting. That can hold someone's interest long enough for new episodes to start airing, but they don't really do that. And I understand, they're busy. If I'm working on a season 
spanning story arc, or a full-fledged movie, my priority would not be on a little blog either. But you think they would have come up with at least some kind of schedule? Now, if anyone from the creator sees this, trust me, I know how it is having to find the time to make a simple post on social media, even if it only takes a few seconds to take the picture and a few more to post it online. People get tired, it's understandable, but personally, I think a solution can be found for that, and I think it should have been found a long time ago. But the blame isn't entirely on the crew universe either. Look at other shows or films by other studios. They usually have their own verified Twitter. Where's the verified Steve Universe Twitter or OKKO Twitter giving us updates or just funny memes related to the show to get us out through the day? They don't do that. It's all under Cartoon Network's Twitter. And I mean, the official Steve Universe YouTube was by Cartoon Network in the United Kingdom. Why wasn't the US one all over that? Why isn't Cartoon Network posting clips from episodes as soon as they air? There's a reason why clip channels get more views than the actual official uploads. CONSISTENCY! Thus, those subscribers have loyalty. I'm in the wrap-up portion of this rant now because I've been talking for far too long. This raw recording is over an hour, but Cartoon Network, I get it. The show does not make money. Which may be a shock for everyone else listening. But yeah, Steve Universe is not a breadwinner. It doesn't even air in a bulk of other countries. Because although it has a great message and it's progressive, not every country is down with that message. So revenue that could be made there, it's gone just like that. Yeah, there's merchandise. And I mean, merchandise can go a long way, just look at Ben 10. One of Cartoon Network's most profitable shows, and merch is a huge reason for that. But Steven Universe merch is clearly still finding its footing. Which isn't exactly in Cartoon Network's control. That's more the companies that license Steven Universe merchandise. And if a show isn't making money, I can see why you wouldn't put it as a high priority. But guess what? It's arguably still the most talked about show on Cartoon Network at the moment. And making a little bit more money is probably better than making little money at all. Again, I figure only so much can go into the B word, but 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 budget and everything we see has cost something to make. Someone got paid for that social media post. Someone got paid to edit this promo. And yes, cable is dying as a whole. But guess what? It's not not just because people are dropping their service. It's definitely about the content as well, and how often people are getting said content. And yes, people do watch the show online, not through the app, not through Cartoon website, not buying the episodes. They do watch it illegally, and that does hurt the show. But I have also seen hundreds of comments that are like, oh, I just check online because I never know when it is going to air on TV. And as cringy as it may sound, the crew universe could be semi-proactive in trying to correct this, trying to correct people watching it online illegally and the network losing money by just throwing in a quick joke of Steven watching crying breakfast friends and going and this tried watching this illegally online through kiss cartoon but I showed her how to use the app I mean we had an entire short that was just meta commentary on YouTube and reactors so you can get the message out there and take a few cringe points scheduling when the hiatus occur advertising and presence Cartoon Network is not excelling in any of these areas, and for that reason, Steve Universe is dying. And like I said, this ties into a much bigger problem with Cartoon Network. And even though I love Cartoon Network and I love Steve Universe, and while I've heard all the information and BS claims, like, oh my god, Cartoon Network is purposely trying to sabotage a show. Oh my god, it's Rebecca Sugar's fault. It's not. None of those are correct. But if anyone wants to point fingers solely at the fans, it's taking responsibility off Cartoon Network as well. Now, Cartoon Cartoon Studios itself, the crew universe, there's only so much they can do in this situation. Yes, an episode, that's their baby. But then they kind of give it to the adoption agency, and they have no control over that baby's life from here on out. Oh yeah, huh, that's kind of dark, isn't it? Cartoon Network, I'm not done with you yet, but this show is going the way of Adventure Time. And while you guys did help Adventure Time go out on a high note, the exact same mistakes are repeating. Long, inconvenient hiatuses at inconvenient places, and minimal advertising. Although it's weird because Adventure Time definitely did make Cartoon Network much more money than Steven Universe probably ever will. I don't know if the show can get back on its feet. I don't know if Cartoon Network can change. But I do know that by putting this out there, I'm at least hoping give it a fighting chance. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to support us, please check out the Roundtable on Patreon. If you could throw a like, share, subscribe, turn on notifications, that'd be amazing. I've been Ostrich Vox, and I hope you have an awesome day. See ya! <laughs>